teaching, started a brand new teaching series last week called Ready to Heal. We've been in this theme. God has us in this theme of, of being made ready for whatever the year brings, whatever God has for us. We are being made ready. Amen. I mean, the Holy Spirit wants to equip you and make you ready. Amen, somebody? And so we've been talking about different things that God's making us ready for, and we started this idea of being ready to heal. Now, I want to make sure you understand, and we talked about this last week, but when I say ready to heal, yes, I believe God wants you to be healed, but when we say ready to heal, we are being made, I believe God is making us ready to not only receive healing, but to minister healing to everyone around us. Amen, somebody? In fact, I believe with all of my heart, with all of my soul, everything within me bears witness that there has, in fact, never been a greater time in human history. There has never been a greater time in the history of our nation than for the church of Jesus Christ and the sons and the daughters of God to step in, fill the gap, and be the agents and vessels of hope and healing that Jesus has called us to be. Amen? This is not the time for us to continue fighting. This is not the time for us to continue bickering. This is not the time for us to continue in conflict. This is the time for the church of Jesus to allow Jesus to flow through us like never before. Amen? And so we are going to be ready to heal. Daniel chapter 11, verses 30, verse 32, and especially this last part, this is where we're going to, this is going to be our jumping off point today. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32 says he will flatter and win over those who have violated the covenant. And that's really not the important part. Here's the part I really want you to get to right here. It says, but, everybody say, but. But the people who know their God will be strong and do exploits. Amen? Let me say it again. The people who know their God will be strong and do exploits. You guys ready to do some exploits in Jesus' name? All right, six of us. I said, are you ready, Red Life Church, to do, be strong and do exploits in Jesus' name? Yeah. Amen. Let's get after it. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for this time and the word. We thank you for your word today, God, girding up our spirits. So I thank you for your word uh, being like meat to our soul, God, giving us food and strengthening us, God, and causing us to grow strong so that we can be everything you've called us to be, do everything you've called us to do. And Jesus, I pray that as we look at your word together today, God, that you will encounter us and that you will speak through us, Father, in a powerful and wonderful way. In Jesus' precious name, everybody said, amen. Um, listen, have you guys ever uh, encountered like maybe a stray dog or a neighborhood dog that you didn't know coming to your yard and you try to shoo it away or try to shoo an animal away? And uh, you ever try to shoo an animal away that don't shoo? You know what I'm talking about? Isn't that a weird feeling when, when something that should be afraid of you decides it's not afraid of you anymore? There's honestly, there's maybe nothing more afraid, scary to me than when an animal that, I, that should be afraid of me comes at me. Like this one time, we lived in Louisville, Kentucky, and I, I, I was working third shift, and I, I pulled into our apartment complex, and, and, we, and there was like a, the apartment spaces were here, and the apartment complex was over here, and there was this big uh, retainer wall, and I pulled my truck in front of that retainer wall, and this raccoon head popped up over the wall, and I thought, well, that's kind of cool. I've never really been that close to a raccoon before, so I got out to kind of investigate, and the raccoon decided, oh, you want to fight? And the raccoon started coming at me, and I was like, oh, I was just kidding, and I, and I started, I started, I was like backing away. I was like, no, Mr. Raccoon, please, please, no, no, Mr. Raccoon, and the raccoon like followed me all the way up to the apartment building. I was like, this animal, this ain't how it's supposed to, I'm, God has given me authority in the earth, you know what I mean? And uh, this raccoon didn't get the memo or something. It wasn't working out. I was scared for my life. Honestly, I thought I, thought I was going to have my face eaten off by a raccoon. It's, I never had the same relationship with raccoons since then. I uh, never, never, never even tried to look at one. I'm like, right, you, you, we get it. Hey, we ain't, all right. And so, and so this happened again one time with something. This actually was a person that I thought would be afraid of me. They decided they weren't going to be afraid of me. I was in college, and I, uh, when I was in Bible college, I worked at the wonderful Travel Lodge Motel. Not a hotel, a motel in Columbus, Ohio, right off the 70 uh, exit. And if you've ever been around Gender Road in Columbus, Ohio, right off the 70 exit and seen the wonderful Travel Lodge, 
uh, you know, I don't know what you know about Travelodge. This is not a five-star establishment. This is a lock the door at nighttime, at dark type of establishment. But it was a great job for a college kid because I didn't have to do anything but study and read and uh, check in drug dealers and, and various other miscreants that came through. And that's, that's literally what it was. And so uh, this one night, it's, uh, it's, it's like 9, 10 o'clock at night. All of a sudden, I get this bang on the door. <gasps> help he's gonna kill me and I poke my head out and there's this there's this there's this young lady this young woman and uh she's obviously distraught and she said he's gonna kill me so I unlock the door and I investigate her boyfriend is charged he's following her down the parking lot I'm assuming some sort of domestic violence situation and I thought to myself you know what it's time for Justin Bradley to step up and be the hero be the man that God has called him to be so I went behind the counter I picked up the Louisville Slugger baseball bat that I kept behind the, the counter and like every Every cool movie scene was flashing through my head, you know what I mean, of me being like, hey, this is, this is it. I mean, I, I don't, I don't let's, let's, let's do it. Let's go. So I'd come out of the, of the, of the thing, and I slammed the belt. The, this is a 100% honest to God true story. I slammed the, the, the bat on the wall. I was like, hey, you get out of here. You leave her alone. Whatever I said. And, uh, you know, in Jesus' name, I don't know what I said, but, uh, but, 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 now, that should, like, in my mind, that should be enough. This dude should stop. But he was undeterred, just like the raccoon that came at me later on. Listen, the dude, in fact, instead of being undeterred, he's like, oh, you want to go? And he bends down and starts picking up big rocks that are in the, in the thing. And I'm like, are we going to have batting practice? What's about to happen here? And he starts coming at me more and more. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, this isn't working out the way it worked out in the movies, and I don't know what's going to happen. And so I was like, you know what? Let's just lock ourselves. Let's you and me both go hide inside. So me and the girl, we go inside. We lock the door. He's banging on the glass. I call the police. Police come, show up. You know, and, and this is this is come to find out. This cat was like a triple A baseball player, a pitcher. So when he saw me with the bat, he was like, okay, well, I'll just throw some rocks at you. And I thank God that I didn't try to be the tough. Here's the thing. See, I wasn't big swole yet. You know what I mean? Like, like it was going to be a couple of, I was still like 180 pound, uh, you know, kind of a skinny kid, uh, moderately so. And I don't know if I've ever been skinny. But anyway, you know, I, it was going to be two or three years before I transformed myself. Because I bet if Big Swole came swinging that bat, he might have at least thought twice. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I don't, he made he might have whipped me, but I bet I would have got a couple better licks in. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's all I'm going to say about that. So anyway, my point. My, and then, then, then this this is what's crazy. The next day in Bible college class, we're going over the Old Testament, and there's a wild story in the Old Testament, right? There's this wild story where uh, in Genesis, where the Bible says that Lot was living in a sinful place. I believe it's in Sodom and Gomorrah. And some visitors come to, to hang out at Lot's house. And the Bible says the place was so full of wickedness that the men surrounded the town, banging on the door, demanded that Lot give him the visitors so they could, you know, abuse them and have to wait them. And the, this, the, wow, this is like one of these wild Old Testament stories. The Bible says that Lot threw out his daughter instead of the guests, right? And you're like, hey, you used to read that, and you're like, how in the world, how in the world do you let that happen? Honestly, and I know it was wrong. I know it was the wrong thought. I caught myself right away. But after that experience with that girl inside and the dude banging on the glass, I was like, you know what? I kind of understand what happened with Lot. I know what was going on that night. You know what I mean? It was wrong. Yeah, but I get it. Like, it's like, okay, I get it, but I don't get it. That's messed up. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's just the way the brain works. That's what happened. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm just being honest about true feelings and emotions that happened when my life was in danger a long time ago. Here's the whole point to all that. Moments to be heroic only show up in moments when everything's going haywire and everything's going crazy. Amen? Heroes don't show up when everything's going good. Heroic moments don't show up when everything's going well. Heroic moments only present themselves, and heroic opportunities only show up when everything is going to hell in a handbasket and everything's falling away around. Do you mean somebody? And so this Daniel chapter 11, Daniel in chapter 10 has had this vision. He has such a crazy vision that he doesn't understand. And he says, I fasted for 21 days to ask God to show me what this vision meant. 
And in Daniel chapter 11 and 12 is actually the moment where this angel of God actually comes from heaven and begins to explain all of these things that Daniel had seen prophetically in a vision. And he, he not only is the angel describing the next several hundred years of Babylonian, Persian, and, and, and Judean history that will actually take place, that has already taken place, he's also describing, Daniel also saw a prophetic vision of the end times and the tumultuous times and the turmoil and the conflict and the wars and the fighting that would take place. And as the angel is describing and saying, Daniel, here's all these wild things that are going to happen. There's going to be kings fall and kings rise and nation against nation and wars and trouble and turmoil. He says in the middle, in the middle of all of that fighting, in the middle of all of that conflict, there will be some people who know their God and do exploits. And I believe God has called us, I believe God has called you and me to be those type of people. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. Let me say this. During times of turmoil, watch this now. During times of turmoil, God raises up people to stand strong and do exploits. God has some things for you and I to do in this season, amen? God has some, some people for you and I to reach in this season, amen, somebody? God has some, God has some miracles for you to flow through you and I's lives and hands and, and prayer lives in this season, amen, somebody? Why? Because in the middle of conflict, in the middle of turmoil, God will raise up a people who know him and will stand strong and do exploits. Now, the funny thing about this exploits part the original hebrew the, the translators actually added that word exploits i don't we don't know why i'm not sure why the actual hebrew the literal hebrew of that cha of that chapter and verse daniel eleven thirty two, simply says this in the, in the literal hebrew translation says the people of god will stand strong and do it just ends <laughs> at the word do and i believe that's because god was saying you know what in the middle of conflict, in the middle of turmoil, in the middle of nations rising against nations, in the middle of kingdoms falling and kingdoms rising, in the middle of, in the middle of society, society's upheaval, in the middle of hurt, in the middle of damage, in the middle of all these things, God is saying to him that, his, that God's people, people who know their God, are not just going to simply cower away and hide away behind some nice four walls, but that is going to be the time that people who know their God will stand up and do something in Jesus' name. Turn your, turn your neighbor and say, God's called us to do. Say it over yourself, God's called me to do. So the question is this, what, what do we do? What are we supposed to do? Well, let's look at what Jesus did. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Peter, this is what he says about Jesus. It says, you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, watch this now, then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. What did Jesus do? Jesus did good and healed all. Amen? Say that. Say, do good and heal all. Say it again. Do good and heal all. You know, I think we, the Bible, especially in the Gospels, and a lot of times, especially in our charismatic, spirit-filled, uh, centric uh, uh, expression of worship here, a lot of times we focus on the healing part and the miracle part and the, and the spiritual part of everything Jesus did. But we forget that the Bible says that Jesus, not only did he pray for the sick and raise the dead and heal, and heal the sick and, and, and give sight to the blind and cast out devils, but this says that he actually did good everywhere that he went. Amen? In fact, the Gospel of John closes its final lines, say that, say that if the things that Jesus did when he was on the earth were all written down, John says that the world doesn't have enough pen and paper to record everything that Jesus did. He did, he did some stuff now when he was here. Guess what? If he's our example, 
What should the people of God who know their God, who are standing strong, what should we be doing? Doing good and healing all. Amen? This is what you understand about the ministry of Jesus. The ministry of Jesus and the ministry that God has called us to is both practical and spiritual. Amen? It is both socially aware and socially viable and wanting to make the world a better place. And it is also wanting to deal with the spiritual climate and the spiritual atmosphere and the spiritual tone of the world that we live in. And sometimes I think we get this weird dichotomy, this weird, like it's an either or thing that we decide, well, we're going to be, we're going to be really focused on the community. We're going to be really focused on outreach. We're going to be really focused on, on feeding people and clothing people and, and providing shelter. We're going to be really focused on meeting people's physical needs. And, and then a lot of times we do that and we leave behind the spiritual part. We leave behind the part where, where we're going we're gonna to cast out devils and we're going to heal the sick and we're going to believe God to do great miracles. Or we go the other way where it's all healing, it's all prayer, it's all spiritual, it's all casting out devils, and we don't ever figure out how to actually meet someone's practical need. Well, God, this is what this Bible tells me, that it's both. The ministry of Jesus is both. The ministry of Jesus is practical and spiritual. Amen, somebody? The ministry of Jesus is both practical and miraculous. Okay? It's loving your neighbor. And it's also praying and believing God and watching God do miracles as you pray for that neighbor. Amen, somebody? It's believing God to multiply the food. And it's also providing the food as we have the means and the ability to provide it. Amen, somebody? It's caring about social injustice and racism and financial inequality. It's caring about those things and doing something to provide for that need. And it's also, it's also speaking into the heavens and casting down spirits and principalities that exist and creating a spiritual climate to where the practical work we do continues because we said, come on, somebody, it's practical and it's spiritual. It's believing God for healing, and it's also understanding that if I take care of my body and do what I can do to be healthy, I'll be a lot better off. Amen? It's both and. It's doing good, and it's healing all. Let me just say this. Don't, God help us, don't let me be a Christian who only knows how to pray for healing but doesn't ever figure out how to lend a helping hand. Amen, somebody? Somebody shares a need. And all I say is, and sometimes, listen, I get it, sometimes it's all you can do. I understand that. Sometimes all I can do is pray for you. Amen? But sometimes, if I'm honest, I could do more, but it's way easier and way more convenient for me to just say, well, I'll pray for you. Amen, somebody? Don't let us be Christians. Don't let us be a church who knows how to pray for healing, who knows how to pray the fire of God on somebody, who knows how to see people get slain in the spirit and receive miracles and doesn't ever know how to actually lend a helping hand. Come on, somebody. And on the other side of that, though I don't have it written down in cute little ways on the screen, don't let me be a Christian who only knows how to lend a hand and doesn't ever figure out how to pray for healing. Come on, somebody. It's both and. Jesus is doing good and healing all. Amen, somebody? And we want to be, if we're going to be like Jesus, we want to do both. And listen to what Jesus said, what Peter says about Jesus. Peter, who's talking here in Acts 10. He says, Peter healed, did good, and healed all who are oppressed by the devil. Who did Jesus heal? All. Wait a minute. Just Jewish people? Just religious people? Just people that went to church on Sunday morning? Just people that looked like him? Just white folks or black folks or brown folks or whatever? Come on, somebody. 
just people that believed everything and 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 no, all who were come on somebody. Listen, let me tell you something, family. If we are going to step up and be the river of healing that God has called us to be, then we better be prepared and be ready and check our hearts and get our hearts checked out so that we are ready, watch this, to do good to all and to heal all that God brings our way. Amen, somebody? You know, I was actually reading the story of Jonah this week in my, in my devotional time, just my, my time with God. And if you know the story of Jonah, God tells Jonah, he says, I want you to go to the city of Nineveh. I want you to preach repentance there. And the Bible says, of course, Jonah doesn't want to go. And so he goes the opposite direction. A big fish swallows Jonah as he gets, after he gets thrown in the sea. There's a lot going on. I'm not going to get the whole thing. The Bible says, finally, when Jonah gets to Nineveh, he preaches repent for, for judgment to hand. The Bible says the city repents and thousands of people dedicate their lives to God and God. And then the Bible says that God relents the judgment that he had reserved for Nineveh. And in the last chapter of Jonah, Jonah, the Bible says, is very angry with God. In fact, Jonah goes into the desert, sits down under a tree, and basically says, you know what, God, just go ahead and kill me now. Now, Jonah's just seen the greatest miracle of his entire life. Thousands of people, an entire city gets pretty much born again, and revival breaks out, and Jonah's mad about it. Why? Because Jonah didn't like the Ninevites. It's the, it's the truth. You can read and God, God shows up to Jonah and says, Jonah, what are you upset about? And Jonah says, this is why I didn't go to Nineveh, because I knew that if they repented, you would not bring your judgment on them, and so I wasn't going to give them the opportunity. You know what that shows me, guys? Is that God, God can move through me in a miraculous way, and my heart still not be right. Amen? Amen? God, just because God shows up and manifests his will, listen, do you think God's going to let an entire city die and go to hell because Jonah had some issues with racism? No, God loves those people too much. So he'll work through an ornery little thing like Jonah, just like he works through some ornery little things like you and me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that my heart has been made right. Amen? Amen. And I want my heart to be right. And listen, and what, is, what is a right heart? If, if, I'm, if we're going to be a ready to heal, the right heart is, God, I want to do good to all, and I want to heal all. I'm not going to cast judgment. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to throw stones. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to love. Here's what, I'm going to love people. I'm going to do good to all. I'm going to believe God to heal all. And Holy Spirit, we're going to let you take care of everything else. Amen, somebody. Do good to all, heal all, okay? Now, let's make sure we understand how this works because there is a process here. Peter says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and then he did good to all, and he healed all who were oppressed of the devil. Listen to me close. The only way that we can do this is through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen? This is not about us just being better people and, and doing, and, and, and this is us trusting God and recognizing that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has in fact empowered you and I to do good and to heal all, but we can't do it outside of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen, somebody? I, and so here, here's how it works. Here's, how, here's the pattern we see laid out here in this text is that heaven, the Holy Spirit, heaven moves in me and then I move in the earth and as I move in the earth and as I move in my life and as I move in my school and I move on my job and I move in my home and I move in my family, as heaven moves in me, I move in the earth and then heaven moves through me. Amen? And we can't, if we want to see real miracle, if we want to really see people healed, if we want to really be able to do good, listen, we have got to follow that pattern where, where it's not just Justin Bradley reaching out and it's not just Red Life Church reaching out, but it actually becomes the Holy Spirit reaching out through us. Amen, somebody? Heaven in me, me in the earth. Heaven through me. You know, the Bible says too. watch this, just I'm not going to read it, but a few verses down from this story. What's going on here is Peter is actually, for the first time, Peter is preaching to Gentiles, non-Jewish people. They're receiving the gospel at a guy named Cornelius' house. 
who was a Gentile, a a non-Jew, a Roman. And the Bible says in just a few verses, this is Peter sharing the gospel and telling them about Jesus. And in just a few verses down, after Peter shares this part about Jesus, you know what happens? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit began to fill the people in Cornelius' house with the same baptism of the Holy Spirit, with evidence of speaking in tongues, just like the disciples took place on, in Acts chapter 2. Nobody was praying for them. Nobody, nobody gave an altar call. Just the Holy Spirit showed up at the preaching of the Word of God and began to fill people. And you know what I believe in the name of Jesus? That there are some of you right now in this moment while you're sitting here, there are some of you right now that are in your living room, around your kitchen table, and you're, and you're, and you're joining in with us right now. Guess what? The Holy Spirit wants to give you a fresh anointing, a fresh baptism, a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit to go and do good and heal all. And I just dare you to receive that in Jesus' name. Amen? There's a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit for you today to do and to heal. Now listen, this is for everyone. Amen? Turn, turn to somebody around and say, this is for you. Type in the chat in the comments right now on YouTube or Facebook. Say, this is for you. This is for you. This is for, this is for everyone. This is for everyone. This is not just for a select, empowered, entitled few. This is for anyone who believes. Well, that's a fairly bold statement. Guys, I'm just telling you exactly what Jesus said. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse 12. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. I didn't make that up. Jesus, that's Jesus talking. That's you got a red letter Bible that's written in red. Those are the words of the master. The same works I've done. You watch this. Not you can do, not you should do, you will do. Amen? Well, why haven't we seen it? Maybe the season hasn't been right. Maybe, maybe the world around us hasn't gotten crazy enough to force the heroes of God to stand up and get ready to stand strong and do. But we're in the season right now where the people who know their God, God is raising you up to do. To do what? To do good. To do the same works Jesus did. To do the same works Jesus did. That means that if you see Jesus doing it in the Bible, the Holy Spirit in you can and wants you and I to do the same thing. Amen? Now, don't get freaky. Don't get weird. Don't go to the funeral home on Saturday and start and start raising people up out of caskets unless you know God has told you to do it. Please know that God told you to do it. Okay? Well, Jesus did it. He did. But you also have to understand... Jesus raised a few people from the dead. There were still a lot of people that died in the time Jesus was on the earth. Amen, somebody? Jesus was led by the Spirit, surrendered by the Spirit, okay? I mean, you pull a body out of a casket, you better know you heard from God. Amen, somebody? (laughs) But let's not be afraid to believe for that kind of big thing. Come on. Let's not be afraid. If Jesus did it, healing the healing blind eyes, opening deaf ears, raising the lame, making them walk, the same works. And then he said, greater works will you do. Now, this is this has always been the question. How in the world can we do greater things than Jesus did? Well, it's not that we're going to do greater, like more spectacular things that Jesus did. Jesus said, in fact, this is going to happen because I'm going to the Father. As long as the reason Jesus has to go to heaven and the Holy Spirit has to, it's for the Holy Spirit to come to earth. As long as Jesus remains on the earth in a physical body, all of the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of Jesus. Do you understand? Okay, so so even though Jesus was fully God, for that season of Jesus, of God in the flesh, Jesus Christ on the earth, all of God was housed in a human form, Jesus Christ, okay? Which means that the only place the Holy Spirit could show up was wherever Jesus showed up physically. You follow me? So, so... So the greater things was the fact that Jesus said, I'm going to the Father, 
and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to fill you. And now the Holy Spirit doesn't just have to show up wherever I am, but the Holy Spirit is going to show up wherever you are. So you're not going to do greater things, more spectacular things than I've done, but you'll do greater in, in, in way of volume. Because now instead of Jesus being one place and the Holy Spirit being one place on earth, now the Holy Spirit is spread out throughout the entire earth and the glory of God covers the earth like the waters cover the sea through the Holy Spirit working through his church, working through his people. Amen, somebody? The same works will you do, greater works will you do. Now listen, listen, this is the truth for every believer. This is the the truth, if you are a believer in Jesus, if you are a son or daughter of God, this is the truth Jesus has for you. Greater work, the same works and greater works will you and I do. Amen? And this is for anyone who believes. You might say, well, I don't know. I don't know if I know enough stuff yet. Hey, guess what? We got a great first step to help you know some stuff. You're not going to get it all figured out. But guess what? If you're like, man, I don't, I don't know enough scripture. I don't know how to read the Bible. I don't know enough stuff. Guess what? We have this thing called Growth Track that's available for you. You can go online at any time at redlifechurch.com, four sessions. We're gonna, and, 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 and you're going you're gonna to see me talking on video. Guess what? You can go through that. You're going to get tools. You're going to get resources. And that'll be a great first step to helping you grow in your walk with God so you can have some confidence doing what God's called you to do. Amen? For anyone who believes the same works and greater works, that's the truth. Now listen, I know when I tell you anyone who believes the same works and greater works, there's a bunch of you, if I can get the music to come help me, there's, a, there's some of you that you begin to already think, well, that, that you can't possibly be talking about me. Preacher, you're, there's no way you mean this child of God. There's no way you mean this son or this daughter of God. You don't know my baggage. You don't know my past. You don't know my history. You don't know what I struggle with. You don't know what I struggled with last night and what almost kept me from coming to church today, preacher. There's no way you're talking about me. You don't know what I've had to fight through this week. You don't know what kind of devils I'm dealing with on a regular basis. There's no possible way you mean me. Surely there's someone else. Surely there's a more spiritual person. Surely there's a more religious person. Surely there's a more holy person. Listen, Listen to me, is that, did Jesus say any of that in that text? Did Jesus say only people who, <laughs> who go to Red Life Church? No. Did he say only people who can quote 50 scriptures off the top of their head? Did he say only people who pray for three hours a day? No. Did he say only people who have no doubts and no worries and are never confused about anything in the Bible? See where I'm going with this. Did he say only people who got no issues? Who got no hang-ups, who got no hurts, who got no bad habits? Did he say only people who don't freak out on the road and honk their horn and cuss people out when traffic things happen? Did he see only people who never get mad, never get frustrated and yell at their kids? No. Did he see only people who speak with a nice soft voice? Say brother and sister so and so and no. No. Did he see only people in suits and ties and shiny shoes? No. Did he say only people with a bunch of money in their bank account and aren't struggling to pay their bills? No. Anyone who believes the same works will you do you know why the church is so ineffective and struggling to make an impact that god's called us to make and i'm just talking about, i'm talking about the church in general across the world it's because christians have believed a lie christians have believed a lie that only a select few are able to do the works of jesus well, that's only for people on stage. That's only for people on the, on the leadership team. That's only for people on staff. That's only for people who've done this and checked these boxes. 
No, it's anyone who believes. That is the truth. Listen to me. Get this. Don't decide that you are disqualified for something that Jesus said is available for anyone who believes. Who do you think you are to disqualify yourself for the ministry of Jesus? Who do you think you are to say that what you think is greater than what the king has said? Come on, somebody. Who do you think you are that you think your sin is somehow disqualifies you from what God said is available to you? Who do you think you are that you think your past somehow disqualifies you from being used of God? If Jesus said, anyone who believes, that is the only qualification that you and I need to get ready to receive the Holy Spirit and to say, all right, God, under your power, under your grace, under your strength, I'm going to go and do. I'm going to go and do. Amen, somebody? Are you ready to go and do in this place this morning? Are you ready to stand up in the middle of this turmoil, in the middle of this season that we're in, and say, man, we are going to be Christians who know how to heal and who know how to help? Come on, we're going to be people who do the works of Jesus. Amen? Stand up with me all over this room this morning. God isn't waiting for perfection. He's waiting for availability. Amen? He's waiting for someone who says, God, I'm available. I'm broken. <laughs> I'm a mess. I got issues. God, you're going to have to cover me. God, we're going to have to figure some things out. God, I'm going to struggle. But I'm available. But I'm available. But I'm available. Come on, if you're available, just lift your hands right now. If you're ready to say, God, I'm available. God, I'm available. I'm available to do good and to heal all. Come on, just talk to him right now. Just ask him, just ask him, just ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we're available. Lord, we're making ourselves available. God, we got issues, we got stuff to deal with. God, we're probably going to fall, we're probably going to mess some things up. God, we're probably we're not perfect by any means. God, we're not where we want to be. God, we're not where we would be if, if we, I would not choose me if it was my choice, but it's not my choice. It's yours, Jesus. You've already made the choice. You said anyone who believes. So, Lord, I'm available for that. God, I'm available for that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I curse, I rebuke every lie that tells someone, that tells children of God purchased with the blood of Jesus that they are unqualified to do what you have called them to do. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for your word qualifying us to be everything you've called us to be in the name of Jesus. We're available, God. We're available, Lord. We're available, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit right now. Come on, the Holy Spirit's touching you right now. Come on, the Holy Spirit's moving in your soul like you haven't felt Him maybe ever before right now. In Jesus' name. I just want to, I just want to encourage you and challenge you. And if you sense the Holy Spirit filling you afresh and new, just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Just feel a heavenly language coming from your soul. Just begin to pray, just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we receive that right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> if you're in this place this morning, you don't know Jesus. Maybe the only thing that's disqualifying you from this message relating to you and being for you today is the fact that you don't have a relationship with Jesus, the fact that you don't know Jesus. Right now today, whether you're in this building, you're online with us, right now today in this moment might be your moment to say yes to Jesus Christ. 
And you can say yes to Jesus because guess what? 2,000 years ago, Jesus said yes for you. 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave his life, spilled his blood, allowed his body to be nailed to a tree. You know what he was doing when he did that? He was saying yes to you. He was saying yes to you being a son of God. Yes to you being a daughter of God. Yes to you being forgiven. Yes to you being redeemed. Yes to you doing a great work and doing exploits for the kingdom of God. But it starts, it starts with you and I saying yes to him. You say, how do I do that? How do I do that? It's very simple. It's as simple as A, B, C. I'm going to unpack that for a moment before I invite you to say yes to Jesus. A, the first thing I got to do is I've got to accept the fact that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I got to accept the fact that I cannot fix myself on my own. I've got to accept the fact that I cannot be good enough. I cannot be smart enough. I cannot follow the rules enough. I got to accept the fact that I am not someone who is making mistakes. I'm not a mistaker in need of an eraser. I am a sinner who needs a savior. I got to accept that. A. B, I must believe that Jesus is the savior that I'm in need of. And I can believe that because that's exactly who Jesus declared himself to be. But not only did Jesus say some empty words and say, hey, I'm this guy, but then he backed it up when after he was crucified and buried in a tomb and what we're going to celebrate in about three weeks, Jesus rose from the dead, conquered death, hell, and the grave, proving that he is in fact exactly who he said he was, the savior of the world, the king of all the earth. Accept that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Believe that Jesus is that Savior. And then C, confess that with my mouth. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if I believe anything in my heart and confess it with my mouth, so shall I be saved. Let me tell you how that works, the principle behind that. When I open up my mouth and declare with my mouth, see, Proverbs says that the power of life and death is in my tongue. There's power in the words that I speak. When I speak, what I believe in my heart inwardly, when I speak that out publicly into, into my life, it brings heaven and earth together. It melds together and brings together the moment of what the Holy Spirit is working inwardly when I speak it outwardly. It makes those things, unifies those things, cements those things. Accept, believe, and confess. With every head bowed, every eye closed. You can do that right now today. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you down front. I am going to ask you to raise your hand. That's the public response we're going to make this morning is to say yes to Jesus. If you're with us online, just, just drop the raise hand emoji in the comments or just say, yes, I'm praying that prayer. And then everyone in the building and online, after we pray in just a few moments, go to redlifechurch.com. Right in the middle of the page, it says, did you say yes to Jesus? Click on that tab. You can do it from your phone. Do it before you leave this building. Do it before you move on in your day if you're at home. Fill out the form. It's take you 20 seconds. We'll follow up and just give us a chance to be able to pray with you. Call your name before God. And you can ask any questions you have. In just a moment, these altars are going to be open. There are going to be people here that can pray with you about anything, any need in your life. But right now, if you're here and you say, man, I need to believe in Jesus today. I need to commit my life to Jesus today. I want to believe in Jesus today. And I mean believe like in a way that matters. Believe like in a way that actually begins to affect the decisions that you make. That's the kind of belief Jesus is talking about. Amen, somebody? Having a set of beliefs and living by none of them is really no belief at all. Belief doesn't really happen until it begins to affect the decisions I make. Amen? Believe in him today. Right now, if that's where you are, every head bowed, every eye closed. Don't miss heaven because of anyone. Forget about everyone else around you. It doesn't matter. If the Holy Spirit is talking to you, how do I know he's talking to me? You feel butterflies in your stomach, your palms are sweaty, you're nervous, you almost feel sick in your stomach, like you want to run out of this room. That is a really good indicator that the Holy Spirit is grabbing hold of your heart and knocking on the door of your heart today. Don't miss your chance. Don't miss your moment for anybody or anything right now saying yes to Jesus. Can you raise your hand right now, those in this room? We're pondering the comments right now. I'm looking around to see. I'm looking around to see. I see your hands up. I see your hands up. Look at me. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Everyone in this room, pray with me out loud. If you're watching at home, out loud with you so that you can hear it with your own ears. Repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, I come to you right now, just like I am, a sinner who has sinned. But I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead, and that you did it all just for me. And I ask you right now to forgive me of my sin. 
come and live on the inside of me. Be the king of my life from this moment on. Every thought, every decision, every moment belongs to you. I'm yours. In Jesus' name, thank you for saving me. Amen and amen. Holy Spirit, move in every heart that prayed that prayer. Move in every heart that prayed that prayer, maybe for the first time or for the hundredth time. If we meant it from our hearts, Holy Ghost, I pray that you move deep in our hearts. Let us know, God. Bear witness with our spirit that we are being made children of God right now in this moment. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're making yourself available to do good and heal all, raise your hand all over this place right now. Come on, if you're ready to say, God, I'm making myself available. I'm making myself available. Holy Spirit, make me available to do good and heal all to be the river in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray right now a fresh anointing and a fresh release. God, fresh, fresh, fresh power of the Holy Spirit to do everything that you call us to do. Lord, if, there, if there's things we've been putting off, if there's ways we've, that you've been calling us to serve or step up, people you've been leading us to witness to or to talk to or to pray for that we've been putting off and procrastinating, God, we're not doing that anymore. We're stepping up. We're making ourselves available. And Lord, I declare that the anointing of the Holy Spirit has already been let loose in our lives in Jesus' name. And we are going to trust and operate in that in the name of Jesus. Receive this blessing right now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. These altars are open if you need to find a place to pray. FCYG tonight at 6 o'clock. Let's worship for just a moment as we go. Here in my prayer.